I first reported from Sri Lanka long before the West began listing terrorist organizations. I'm traveling south from the capital, Colombo. I followed this route two decades ago when the government was facing a very different rebellion. The south is poor and rural, and there are hardly any Tamils here. At that time, the rebellion was led not by Tamils, but Sinhalese nationalists. The People's Liberation Front, or JVP, was fiercely patriotic, but also revolutionary. It demanded the overthrow of the state. Under its leader, Rohana Wijavira, the JVP assassinated policemen and government officials. A bomb planted by the JVP exploded at a political meeting a few meters from me. One man died. The JVP exploited the fears of the Sinhalese in the south. They accused the government of making too many concessions to the Tamils and their allies in India. But it was not the violence of the JVP that brought me here. It was the government's response, a counterinsurgency that I found brutal and shocking. What I witnessed then remains vivid today. There was a curfew overnight, and I used to awake to the smell, the acrid smell of burning rubber. And in the beach just behind me, I remember finding a boat stuffed with the bodies of young men with tires around their necks, and they were still smoldering, having been set alight overnight. It was a deliberate message by the government to say, this is what is going to happen to any of your brothers and sisters or children who are challenging the authority of this government. At least 40,000 disappeared. Members of the Sri Lankan army and police were accused of most of the abductions. People were arrested and never heard from again. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I returned to see a woman whose son was taken 20 years ago and never came back. Thank you. What do you remember of the day he disappeared? The ones who took him away were in police uniform. The bus that took him was parked at Beliata police station. But when we went to the police station to ask, they said they had no idea where my son was. She has no picture of her son, just a certificate that says the cause of death is unknown. We don't know anything about the death, how he died. We only know that he was taken away in a vehicle. We don't know anything else. I spend my time now in sorrow. <laughs> No senior police or army officer or politician has been found accountable for the mass killings, even though most mothers and wives know the men responsible for the death of their loved ones. At that time, people in the South were fearful and silent, but one local human rights lawyer was brave enough to speak openly. It was none other than today's president, Mahinda Rajapaksa. People came to his house with photographs of their missing relatives. They started uh, arresting people, thousands, the whole village were taken sometimes. People are, uh, after they arrested them, arrest them, they are disappeared. The government of the time even attacked his house. The police, they threw bombs at my place, grenades. They terrorized the whole area. Well, I remember I was concerned for your life. Quite. You give me the warning. <laughs> I want you not to. Yeah. That's right. Otherwise, I would have gone there and be, uh, gone to that village. They would have just killed me. It was the president who, back then, arranged for me to meet gunmen from the JVP. He shared with them the fears that fuel Sinhalese chauvinism. Indians are coming, going to occupy this land. They are going to take over this land. And already they have 100,000 soldiers in this country and our fear is that they will might come to down south and they might occupy this area what will happen to us and we will be another part of india 
Mahinda said these were patriotic boys who defended the Sinhalese people when the government was selling out to India. They certainly weren't terrorists. That time they never called them terrorists. They always used the word of insur insurgents. So the language has changed? Language has changed. This is what the different is. They call them insurgents. They never call them uh, terrorists. But you did understand the reasons why they took, took up a gun? I was not sympathizing the cause. I was sympathizing with them the way that the government handled. I believe in it, even today, that you can't, you, I can't be a terrorist. The government cannot be a terrorist. We can't act like terrorists. But the allegation of state terrorism is now being made by Tamils and Sinhalese who oppose the war against his government. The disappearances of the late 1980s introduced a culture of impunity into Sri Lankan politics. Murder and abduction almost became an acceptable tool of the state's counterinsurgency policy. Once again, mothers and wives are coming forward with stories of missing loved ones. The music teacher who lives across the street saw it. He said my husband was bundled away in a red van. Four months after her wedding, this woman's husband disappeared. She fears for her life, and we've concealed her identity. The army had earlier accused her husband, a van driver, of delivering supplies into tiger-controlled areas. As soon as I heard about his disappearance, I went to the army camp and made inquiries. Only then did they say they would start a search. She has heard nothing since from the authorities. Anyone accused of links to the fight for a Tamil homeland is a potential target, even aid workers. Seven of my co-workers were abducted and executed uh, tortured, raped the woman, one woman and seven, six men um, by paramilitary forces aligned to the government. And everybody was afraid to speak. I mean, over the last two years, there's been about 2,500 disappearances of Tamils. Bodies are just found on the side of the road. Um, Tamils with their hands bound and signs of torture. There are checkpoints throughout the capital, Colombo. They're intended to detect Tamil tigers infiltrating from the north. But the controls have instilled fear amongst the 300,000 Tamils living in the city. Critics of the government have been silenced. To oppose the war is seen as an act of treachery. Journalists can't speak, they can't write, the parliamentarians can't open their mouth, anybody can arrest at any time, the business people can't live, they can be abducted, millions can be taken. By whom? By the armed forces. By the paramilitary groups working with the armed forces. Does it disappoint you that some of the human rights groups now are making the same allegations against your government that... You yes, I'm very disappointed with them, you know. Most of these people are paid agents. No, the human rights groups? You know. Some of the human rights groups here. And some, of course, is misled by the propaganda of the uh, FGT. I have given clear instructions to the army, the forces, and the police that they can't take a man with, without a warrant. After this president comes to power, within the last three years, four of our parliamentarians were killed or murdered by this regime, I will say. I am advised by so many people, don't, uh, don't criticize the government. As a parliamentarian, don't I have the right to speak? But I am having the fear within myself. A military victory over the Tamil Tigers will not end the grievances and hatreds that made thousands of Tamils pick up a gun three decades ago. Suresh fought for a Tamil homeland in the 1980s. He then gave up the gun and tried to defend the rights of Sri Lanka's Tamils within the democratic system. I surrendered the weapons. We joined the so-called democratic mainstream. Now I am totally fed up. I am totally frustrated. Why the hell I have to be in this parliament, risking my life? 
If I am alone and suppressed by so many forces, what can I do? You want me to get killed? You want me to die? You want me to perish all my community? What can I do? Tell me the alternative. But to pick up a gun. The Sri Lankan government wants to extinguish the idea of an independent Tamil homeland. History has shown, though, that ideas are not usually defeated on a battlefield. The Sri Lankan government has used the language of the global war on terror to try to sanction its brutality. And in doing so, it has proudly claimed to be an ally of the West in fighting a shared enemy, terrorism. <laughs> 